What's going on guys, Plastic Beach X3 back here with another One Piece video. This time going to be doing a little bit of a different video. Uh, I want to try out commentating over um, other people's games and um, not just my own on the rank sim. So we're going to be taking a look at the top 16 uh, match, the feature match at the TAC New Zealand regionals um, over on their Twitch channel. Up here you can see TAC Games AU. Uh, if you want to watch the video, go watch it yourself without my commentary. Um, but otherwise, I'm going to be commentating over it. Um, it's going to be uh, Hans Katakuri versus Elion's Nami. Um, and it's the top 16. I almost wanted to show off the deck list as well, just so we know what we're going into. Um, we have the uh, Han over here with a decently standard Katakuri list, bar the Tropical Torment. Well, actually, Nekomamushi as well. <laughs> I'm not sure if that's standard. I don't really know what Katakuri list I guess look like in 08. Uh, you see like three of the Nami, one of the Torment, three of the Neko, only two of the Kiku, uh, two Na Onami. They're on three Flame Split, so just cutting uh, Mario entirely. Pretty interesting. And back on the Brulees as well, which is interesting. Slim down on the Gadatsus. Um, yeah, only one Kata. Two seven mom, four ten mom, so like the high end. Uh, you would think like Kata Curry is kind of a deck where you want to just slam high end and stuff, but I guess um, in 08 <clears throat> it's going to be changing up to more of a mid range strategy. Um, and then we'll go into Elion's um, Nami list, a pretty wild list as a Nami player myself. Um, obviously, we have all the standard stuff, but noticeably only three white snake um i know i watched his deck profile he said that he uh just um felt like this card was better at three um because it does clog and like i don't disagree but you know whatever it's for another video um two of the seven drop croc pretty crazy pretty crazy pretty crazy uh two mr bones and instead of hanger he's on two zef which is you know pretty interesting in and of itself right there um, I would love to see him play the mirror, um, just so I know why this card is good. I mean, I'm sure it is like he got sick. Or I probably shouldn't say what he got because it kind of ruins the whole video, I guess, <laughs> of like who wins, but he did end up topping this regional. So, I, um, would like to get to know, um, how he's playing this card and stuff. And then only two Glorioso as well, which is very interesting as well. Um, so pretty cool list. Let's get into the games. Um, I believe it's going to be best two out of three. Um, we have Han just shuffling up here. I think we're on 1.5. I hope that's fast enough. Because I do think it is best 2 out of 3, so... Alright, it looks like Han's going to go first. Uh, I'm going to pass on 1. Elion will pass. Go to Katakuri's three dawn turn, looking for like a Paro Sparrow, swing five. Oh, probably not even swing five. Okay, they're gonna swing nine. Very big advantage with Katakuri, of course, against Nami is that they can um, manipulate Nami's life to decide, uh, like put good triggers on the bottom so they can burn them later with 10 moms. Um, and just swinging nine is very good in general um, against Nami on their only, when they're only holding up two, or usually one, if they play a Kai or something. Uh, Elion's going to hit a pretty good trigger. He's going to hit the Desert Spada. Um, draw two, trash one. Going to tap three to play the Margaret. And generally, this is where you see Nami players passing. Um, but Elion's going to make a pretty interesting move here. He's going to tap another one to disco to play Apis. Discard the All-Stars in the Snake Dance. Very interesting play. Uh, tapping out, but I, you know, fair enough. He has the blocker. It's just I don't think a lot of players would do that in the case that, you know, Katakuri just swings five. You get a free, um, you know, um, rubber band or whatever. But it is pretty proactive using the Apis um, in this matchup because you know you're on a time limit because of the Tin Mom. So it is pretty heads up. Um, Katakuri is going to swing seven. Look at the opponent's life, of course. They're going to block with the Margaret. I think that was always happening. And then, oh God, I can't see what that is. Um, a four drop, so could, could be Kiku, could be um, uh, the cat. Uh, Elion's gonna tap three for a peel off, gonna draw two cards. And 
they're just gonna pass it up with three hold up um, I, would lo I I think that's Kiku just because of the shine I know that Neko isn't a ray or anything okay it's Neko <laughs> I was totally wrong <laughs> uh, oh they're gonna hit the tropical torment tropical torment says that um, it's a three dawn event that whenever your opponent's at four life, you can trash the top card of their life, so that's actually gonna come up clutch for them. I'm assuming like Nami's one of the main matchups you're attacking that in for. Um, and it's sick that it came up game one. Uh, he's gonna swing uh, 10 into life, gonna look at the top, put it on the bottom. Interesting. Uh, 10. So yeah, you can just kind of curve out perfectly here with, as you, if you're the Nami player, you're gonna gavel, discard all stars, mill two. Oh. And then, yeah, I'm gonna rubber band mill one. And that gets them to 11. I'm uh, gonna pass turn. I'm uh, gonna peel off to start, draw two. Holding up five here. You can see a love, love in there. So you would think you wanna get his hand decently small here, but. He is only facing two attackers. Um, we can see White Snake in his hand as well. It's probably going to be pretty good because Katakuri is going to want to start tapping out to play bigger bodies. So that Neko is just going to be swinging five. If I just had to guess, I can't imagine he's going to put two under to swing into Apis or Kai or anything because uh, that plays so easily into Snake Dance and stuff. And Elion is just going to pass with five. Fair enough. Uh, not sure wonder what the other plays could have been um because i would have considered using another card there if i'm the nami player in this situation just because i know that like i said the katakuri player decent like kind of wants to tap out here and you do have the white snake so um and i just stand corrected i'm just wrong so that's why i'm not at the top tables right now uh they're gonna swing a boat i don't even know one two three four five six uh, so seven uh, it's a 12k banish. Look at the top of the opponent's life. And leave it there because I'm assuming it's a good trigger. Um, so that they can banish it. So actually if you do White Snake here, uh, the Neko won't be able to swing, which is nice. So if White Snake is part of your combo to get out of this, very heads up to not tap out, honestly, by Elion. Maybe just his hand demanded it, I'm not sure. But if I had like a Kai or something there, or another peel off, I would very potentially play it. Uh, he's gonna play the um, rubber band shooter and mill one, go to seven, going to spot, I look at the top three. This is gonna put them at nine while they rearrange their top three. Um. And then we're going to Zeph, 1k counter, go to 10. We're going to tap two for a Love Love Mellow. Three cards in hand, gonna draw one. And that puts them at 15. And then, so White Snake was not part of the combo. Um, but that's fine because they do have the Gloriosa. Uh, they're gonna tap three for a peel off pretty nice pretty nice here and then finally gonna play able to play a Kaya um, and this is kind of where Nami just gets out of hand um, Elion can be pretty well assured that that his next three life are at least decent because uh, Han put them on the bottom put all three of them well, you know put the bottom two on the bottom and then left the top one for a banish swing so he can be like decently confident that his life is pretty good He's going to end up trashing that white snake in the in the uh, rubber band shooter, which is fair enough because those cards are going to become probably less good um, because the opponent is likely going to just be playing mom pass, no swing. Uh, they're going to hit the uh, death wink. Okay, so that was the trigger they were trying to banish off the Nami. Uh, Elion's going to be playing his Mr. One to grab back the gavel. Very powerful. And especially in these late game situations. Elion, ooh, Elion with five, gonna be swinging six at life. Very cool, very cool. It's one of those things where you just like might as well, ooh, God, impel down all-stars trigger. 
and um, Han's gonna swing. Very interesting. I potentially would not have swung there um, because I feel like he's definitely just gonna counter. This only requires two plus fours, and you know, as of course, Nami being Nami, it's gonna have two plus fours. And you're just like giving them a snake, yep, snake dance. So you're putting Kaya back in their hand, which is unfortunate. They could gavel here. Um, they could even snake dance back to one. No, they had, we know they have gavel. So they're probably just deciding what to pitch off the gavel, I'm assuming. If they, the issue is, is that if you pitch something off a gavel, then your Kaya just becomes infinitely worse because you're starting your next turn with four cards rather than five. So they're actually going to end up taking this, hitting the snake dance trigger. Wow. What? That's very interesting. So I guess like, just didn't see the value in gavel. Yeah, I don't know. So they're going to snake dance, bounce the, um, or maybe they just knew they lost. I don't know. Unless I just can't tell how many cards are in their deck and it's very low. I, it looks like it's, what, 15? Maybe they can get there in 15 with 15. Uh, they're going to Kaya. But what I was saying, I just probably wouldn't swing there with Mom because, like, they could snake dance gavel. We know they have the gavel because they added off the bones. Um, and I would just hold my... Plus, I'd never really want to give Nami the last life going into their, like... You know, I never want to give Nami a life when I know the last life the fifth life when i know i'm just gonna be passing afterwards like i'm not gonna try to kill them at all after the swing that takes their life um that's just me i think that's how i found is good in the matchup um it looks like katakuri's just gonna win here uh they're gonna have the flame split for their margaret tap the margaret give Lin, Lin a th um 1000 gonna swing 13 with the Lin, Lin. that's gonna be followed by a 19 I think no 19 21 by the uh, Lin Lin after the swing so they're going to tap for the gavel discard one mill two bones get to 10 love love get to 14 perfectly counter out of that with three dawn standing no blocker of course because of the flame split and it looks like it's going to be a 22 or a 21 I apologize for game one. Very well played by both players. Very cool um, match there. I th it was very cool that the Tropical Torment came up. Gave um, Han <coughs> three burns, whereas he would have only had two because he only had two 10 moms. Very cool. Um, we'll see in the future games if the, tr the one of comes up again like that. Um, I just highly doubt it because, you know, one ofs are one ofs, but. Um, if this was, you know, Swiss, Katakuri would have just uh, beat Elyon, but we're going into game two here. Um, I'm going to skip past to where all the players are shuffling and whatnot. We'll get to the game. Oh. Oh. All right. So I'm assuming that um, Elyon won the die roll. Or placed higher in Swiss, in, uh, Swiss because I assume he's the one who chose to go second last game. Um, so it looks like Elion's going to choose again. I'm assuming to go to to go second as well this game. Um, Elion's going to mulligan. All right. Yep. So I was right. Um, Elion's going to choose second. Han is going to search the Tenemon. Great start. Great start. Um, unfortunately, on the odd curve, but still, I mean, you're going to have time to play it because you're playing a Tsunami. Um, Elion's going to draw two Trash 2 with their Kaya on turn 2. Or 2 to on turn. Going to trash the Crocodile and the um, Rubber Band. Very interesting. Once again, by Elion choice to tap out here I just can't say I would have done that and maybe I'm I'm sure I'm missing something but I 
Um, yeah, no. Actually, it's probably right to just tap out there against Katakuri at least. Um, if not for the simple, like, just because they're going to be able to swing 9 instead of 8 like every other leader. So, like, your gavel really doesn't do anything. Um, yeah, so maybe it is just right to tap out there. Because, um, like, the whole gavel check of it all, you know, are you going to swing 8 or not? to give me value off my gavel or not you know the whole mind game isn't there anymore uh, because they're just swinging 10 or sorry 9 um, yeah interesting so then um, Han is going to be able to, to just totally counteract that play by playing a pair of Sparrow uh, swing 5 and, and Elyon just has to take that no trigger um, Han will then on his next turn swing a 9 with the leader holding one up hmm and Elion is going to snake dance back the Margaret or sorry not the Margaret but the Gloriosa and then discard it for counter and recognizing that there's only really two swings coming his way uh, next turn Elion is going to play a double Margaret blocker um, to block the Paro Sparrow and the leader um, Han is seen I think three of Elion's life at this point uh, he's gonna let him take that no trigger card he's actually gonna take it okay hmm maybe he's converted to a strategy where he's just taking all of his life so that they don't get burned by torment and mom okay fair enough Um, yellow does not have a way to punish having a ton of cards in hand so like that's a valuable strategy whereas like if you're playing against a blue leader definitely not doing that um, so they're gonna start five into the pair of sparrow of course this is gonna draw to two K or a 1k from the opponent um, let's see what Elion does here he's pretty safe he's sitting with two blockers um, and against Kata Curry that's usually just good enough He's going to start with a Gloriosa to find another blocker. Now we do obviously know that he's on the flame spit at this point. Um, so like tripling up on your blockers is obviously pretty good just because flame split will only rest one of them. And he's going to pass with four Dawn up. Um, I have to imagine a seven mom or just fat swings are coming Elion's way. Yo, what? Huh. Okay, so what I just saw was that Han passed on 9 Don. Didn't swing at all. He obviously knows that the triggers are going to be good. Hmm. So I'm assuming he has two 10 moms in hand. He just wants to burn the last two life. But like... Not to be overly critical, but I probably would have just swung huge there. Like, even just one swing. Draw out a blocker or something, you know? And look at the last life that's an unknown. Or no, both lives. All lives were known. Hmm. Elion's going to swing six into life. I think obvi the obvious turn next turn is just 10 mom. Um, because I just don't see any other reason not... Yeah, of course... I just don't see any other reason to, you know, pass on nine than other what, like just having two ten mom. So obviously that's the rationale there, but now he's facing down four Margaret blockers with nine Dawn standing. Let's see if he can get there. Um, Elion has a ton of cards in hand, so I guess just taking the life early strategy obviously played out very well for him. Um, that 13 swing is going to be met by a gavel. Go plus four. Mill two. And then a snake dance. Go to 13. Bounce the bones. And then give up a Zeph as well to go to 14. I'm going to have another 13 swing. Um, so obviously Elion is doing everything in his power to not use his blockers and just tap out here. 
uh, because he just really needs to get cards out of hand, not for only Love Love Mellow, but we know he's on the one Death Wink, um, and just also generally to just, you know, be able to... Wow, that was a very cool play. Uh, he swings 13, he's going to block with the Margaret and then bounce it with the Snake Dance. So that the Snake Dance can stay in hand, or the Margaret can stay in hand, and he will be able to play it, draw a card next turn, and still establish uh, four blockers. Very heads up, very cool. Um, Han is obviously swinging very perfect numbers here. Um, not swinging any more than he has to. He's on the top tables for a reason. Um, going to tap three for nothing. Gonna tap one for the Daz Bones. Going to grab the Gavel. Obviously gonna tap three for the Margaret. Now it's just a question if he's gonna tap three for the Pilaf in his hand as well. Because time is running out. I mean, you can only live up to these mom's swings so many times before you just lose. Uh, he counts out his deck, lo looks around less than 15, I would say, just from the size, just from the looks of it, from how he counted it. Gonna pass turn with six Dawn up, won't be able to use the peel off this turn. Uh, going to actually use the Neko to swing seven into one of the blockers, very cool. And then going to swing 13 at life. Which draws out at least three cards from the opponent's hand. If they choose not to block, of course. So obviously, I just foresee another 13 right after the swing. So he has to account for that uh, Dawn management wise. And then a potential. Hmm, 15? No. Yeah, it's interesting. Like you could go 12, uh, you probably just go 13 with the leader. Actually, you put, no, you can't go 13. You go 12 with the leader. 12 with leader, 12 with Kiku. I don't think it matters. Or maybe you divvy it up better, that, or 9-9 nine, nine or something. Um, they're gonna go 13 with the Lin, the second Lin, after a block for the first one, which I think is fair. Um, One thing to consider with these IRL matches and we're not on the sim is the time. Uh, we're sitting at 25 minutes, which is a little over halfway through, which, you know, seems about right. So it's not like anyone, I think they both players have very ample time to think here. Nope. What the hell was that? <laughs> okay. Uh, anyway, they're going to gavel, uh, mill two. Go to nine. Uh, so they just need to go four more or five more. Going to rubber band shooter, mill one. It's going to take them to 11. Crocodile to go to 12, and then Love Love Mellow, draw a card. And the judge getting in on the action, inserting himself into the match. All right, yep, yeah, let him draw the card, um, and he gets out of it. And then, okay, they're just gonna go seven. Interesting, there is only two Dawn standing, four cards in hand. 
And I believe there's a para over there in the glare. Can't really remember or tell. Uh, they're gonna tap one. No, nothing yet. They still have two Dawn. They're gonna tap two for another mellow. Draw a card. And then a seven comes their way. Of course, gonna look at their own life. And take the block. And then what, nine with the paro and take the block. All right, so going into essentially the last turn of the game, um, Elon's gonna have to find, Elion, sorry. Elion's gonna have to find a way to win on this turn. So he's gonna peel off to start. Gonna Kaya, I'm assuming. Going to Kaya. Go down to four Dawn, oh, five Dawn. Sitting at a fat five in deck. Deciding on what to trash here. Um, they have Gloriosa, so they should know the bottom four at least, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Counting up the gavels in his trash or the one drop events in his trash um, to see how likely it is to draw the next ones. I'm assuming if he doesn't know what his bottom is. So he's going to trash the uh, wink and the spotta. Seems like pretty too good, pretty, or sorry, seems like two pretty good trashes. I'm uh, gonna tap. One for a Bones. Get back a Gavel, of course. That's going to be two cards. Take him down to three. Gavel, Gavel. So there should be one more Gavel in the deck somewhere. Okay. So we're down to three. He's gonna pass turn. All right, and just a clear 22 swing. No D to even draw for turn. Going to anyway. Gonna check all these this uh, trash. Um, I don't really see any way that Han at this point could play around it, but it is nice to know uh, what the opponent is going to do before you commit to anything, especially in this um, this you know late in the tournament. So yeah, just gonna swing 22. We're gonna get the gavel out of hand, mill the spot or take the spotta. Gonna mill uh, all stars peel off, going to a white snake draw card, and then right into another gavel to mill the last two to pick up game two for Elion. Um, so we're sitting one to one after game two, going to go into game three um, with Katakuri being able to choose second, I believe, I'm assuming. Um, very interesting pivot of strategy that tells you how good of a player Elion is. I'm not sure how much they've practiced this matchup, but of course, uh, the way he played game two was vastly different than how he played game one. Understanding that his opponent plays the Tropical Torment, not wanting to get burned by that card again, he just took life very early because that card can only activate whenever the opponent has four, le four or more life cards. Um, so he just actively went down to three very fast so that Tropical Torment just wasn't a factor anymore. And that also plays around the mom to an extent if you have the Margarets to back it up um, like he did. He had all four on the field and actually had a fifth one since he utilized his snake dance so well um, against that 13 swing from a mom that one turn. Um, one thing that obviously made a big difference was that Han had to pass on nine Dawn. He just straight up passed and did nothing. Um, and that was because the opponent had a lot of Dawn standing and a few blockers. So like, he f and also he had two 10 moms in hand. So he wanted to be able to get max value out of those 10 moms. Uh, and that's just the power of also making Katakuri go first. So that won't be a factor this game, of course. Uh, Katakuri is going to be going second. 
if Han has anything to say about it. Elion's gonna keep their hand. It looks like uh, Han's gonna mulligan. All right, let's go into game three. We got 14 minutes left in the round. Uh, Nami is going to play the Kaya, turn one. We see another Kaya in their hand. They're gonna drop two crocodiles, fair enough. Going over to Katakuri's turn, they're gonna pass. And then Nami will simply play the peel off, okay. So once again, um, that's not a very popular play just because uh, tapping out that early doesn't seem that good. Um, I would say it's more likely to play like you just want to play peel off on this turn so that you can hold up two dawn along with it okay of course they have the double peel off so um i stand corrected if you just have double peel off you probably just slam it on the three um, but also recognizing that katakuri can swing nine and that holding up um the dawn that turn isn't going to be very impactful either way because you're going to give up a lot of cards to beat out the nine anyway uh, very heads up uh they're gonna be able to, oh god their hands cracked they're gonna play kaya into kaya jesus so already double peel off triple Kaya's has hit the board and we're not even at um we're not even at <laughs> um eight dawn yet i'm gonna swing six he's gonna give him a 2k uh play the seven mom of course just you know give the opponent life it is a rough game for han nami looks like it opened cracked they're gonna swing six just a m massive fan of the swinging six elion is very cool to see that kind of strategy play out um, by a top Nami player. I'm really glad I watched this because it has taught me a lot about Nami just straight up by watching this. Uh, and then he's going to play another seven. Of course, give the opponent the life, pass turn. Going to play the Gloriosa, look at top five. Find the love, love, mellow. Elion's still sitting at five life, so he has like um so he can you know play around here with his dawn he's gonna swing six hold up eight gonna get another 2k out of the katakuri's hand eventually he's gonna run out of 2ks you might just have to take that life and let him mill the card which isn't the most impactful thing of all time but it is what it is uh he's gonna play a nami for five to ko one of the kayas which um is never like too crazy of a place obviously because they have multiple kaiser and it's gonna snake dance back the other ones um, but it might just be a necessary play in this turn. Uh, he's going to perfectly counter out and with Snake Dance, bounce the Kaya into a White Snake, draw a card. Very cool. Very good. Uh, and then the opponent's going to immediately swing 10, of course, because the leader is now at 6. Uh, going to be met by another Snake Dance, bounce the Kaya, and a Gavel. Jeez. Yeah, triple Kaya, double peel off, double Snake Dance to bounce two more Kaya. So essentially a 5 Kaya online. It's nasty. I'm gonna discard the Deathwing because his hand is just so big. It's never gonna matter probably. And then I'm um, gonna mill the last Kaya in the deck. I'm uh, gonna sling a clean five, or what is that? Is that five? I think that's a pair of Sparrow. I can't tell what that is. I'm sling a clean five and that actually gets through. Or no, six, that's okay. I think that's Okiku. I think he can swing six. Oh, pff, duh, White Snake. Oh my gosh, I'm so dumb. So he's gonna swing six, six, seven with uh, Okiku, Satori, and Leader. He's gonna take the first six. Just because he's probably gonna have to take at least one of these three swings anyway with only one Dawn standing. Uh, so you might as well take the first one and see what you can do afterwards. Um, then he's going to swing seven. Play the Gavel Mill the Love Love or discard the Love Love. Okay. So hand just must be absolutely bonkers to where Love Love is just not a good card right now. Uh, going to play Margaret, which, you know, does definitely does happen in the Nami deck. Like, a lot of times, Love Love is just as crazy as a card as it is. It's just not a good card in your hand, so you must discard it. Um, Going to go right into a peel-off, right into a Daz Bones, get back that gavel, tap another for another Bones, just to hold up two Dawn and a blocker. Wow. And then swing five into the Satori, get a 1k out of hand. 
yeah, it seems like Elion knows exactly what he wants to be doing. Um, he's sitting at five lives, a uh, four life, I apologize, four life. So he can afford to just hold up these two Dawn and start taking life because his opening was so cracked that he's already more than halfway through his deck. So he's just debating, you know, he can afford to just hold up two double gavel this turn and probably win the next turn if he takes off all, all these lives. Of course not playing, um, I don't really think he had the opportunity to play around the Tropical Torment this game, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, he's going to actually not trigger anything there, so it must have been a White Snake, I believe, probably. I just have to assume. Unless he just totally mind gaming the opponent and it had no trigger in the first place. He's going to swing a second 9. I wonder if he's, he's maybe debating on double gaveling this. If he double gavels this, it opens him up to two hits because obviously Margaret can take one of them. Uh, he chooses the Margaret, I think he recognizes that. So now he can uh, better allocate the Dawn with a single gavel here, mill two. Oh, double gavel, okay. So he is gonna end up taking approximately two to three hits this turn. He has three life, so he's gonna live no matter what. And like I said, he's probably just going to take all these life anyway, try to get as many triggers as he can, get as many cards in hand as he can, so that um, so that he can just win next turn. He's going to have to banish this last life, but irrelevant because it wouldn't have done much anyway. It would have just got the bones back in hand, which, you know, is two cards. But it's just very likely Elyon does not need it because the starter was so nasty. You know, he's going to peel off here into Kaya. Into Kaya. And that should be wrap it up. Three, four cards in deck. We know he has at least one. Oh no, we don't know he has a gavel, actually. We got four less than four minutes in the round. Elion's searching through the trash just to be double sure that he can, um, you know, try to figure out what the last four cards in his deck are, of course, so that he can, you know, if he has to love love, he knows when to love love exactly. So we got four peel off, four Kaya, of course, two are in the field. Uh, two Zeph, I didn't see the rest of the ratios in the trash. I see an Apis in hand. Gonna tap three for a Margaret. Draw a card. It's the Love Love. And then pass turn. So now three cards in deck, two Dawn. Trying to think of exactly what combination of cards could get there with two Dawn, but maybe I'm crazy. He's gonna tap the Margaret. But then they double gavel. Maybe he just has double gavel. Oh no, obviously, duh. <laughs> Rubber band gavel. <laughs> okay, yeah, that makes way more sense. Um but yeah, either way, Elyon's going to take that. I'm um, going to advance to top eight. Very um, skillful games there. As much as people say that Nami doesn't take any skill, clearly if you watch that game, if you watch how he changes up his strategy, uh, going starting games two and three, um, you would recognize that obviously that took a lot of skill. That took a lot of preparation. Um, yeah, very well played by both players, of course. Very good players. Right on time too. We're almost ran out of time. Let's look at the list one more time. Um, we saw that this Crocodile didn't really come up, but I doubt it's for this matchup anyway. Like, you're probably just not playing that unless... Um, I know he said in the deck profile that he plays against Bonnie. Is like, mostly what he's doing. Um, because Bonnie just can't clear it. I'm assuming there's other decks. Maybe... I don't even know. Boa, maybe. But Boa still can Red Rocket and stuff. So, I don't know. Interesting card. 
Um, Zeph, of course, did not come up at all. It's for the mirror. Um, but Bones was huge. I feel like Bones was nasty. Apis on that t game one was disgusting. Um, Wink never came up, but um, that's probably not one of the matchups you're putting in for. Whenever I think of Wink, I think of like Calgara, Zoro type aggro strategies that I want to have that card for. Um, yeah. I mean, pretty nasty overall. Overall, And then we'll load up uh, Han's top 16 list. Uh, Tropical Torment, of course, game one was the card of the game. I mean, um, it did exactly what he wanted it to do, exactly when he wanted to do it. It was pretty nasty. I didn't like the Nami. Um, it just seemed like Elyon was able to play around it by uh, Gidatsu Nami just by um, playing multiple Kai's in one turn, uh, kind of similar to how like you play against Luchi and stuff. Um, the Nekomushi was kind of cool. He swung into the uh, Margaret and stuff, so it was kind of cool. Um, but obviously the All-Star is Big Mom broken card um arguably han maybe played a little bit too much into big mom but i mean i think it's i think a lot of people would have made the same decision a lot of very good players would have made that same decision just to get max value out of this mom um but you know hindsight is always 2020 um and then obviously the flame split was nasty against the margarets as well um very cool uh let me know if you guys like these types of videos i think it was pretty fun to watch that game and i think i'm just gonna keep doing this it's pretty fun actually i never didn't think it would be that fun um yeah but um check out my youtube channel if you're new here um i do a lot of ranked games and stuff uh, so if you want to watch that kind of stuff go ahead and check out the channel but either way ggs to all those guys make sure to subscribe to plastic beach x3 for more one piece videos and peace out